Hi and welcome! In this video, we'll be comparing the Winwing Orion 2 throttle with the F18 grips and finger lift kit to the Verpal CM2 throttle with a 3D printed center detent. While the retail model for the Verpal throttle is the CM3, which comes with adjustable detents and other minor improvements, this video should help give you an idea of how these two stack up against each other. This video is not sponsored by either company. A little bit about me and this equipment. I've been pretty invested in HOTAS equipment since about the late 2020. I've owned this Verpal CM2 that I purchased secondhand for about two years and have probably put at least a thousand hours on this throttle, playing primarily competitive Star Wars Squadrons and Star Citizen. I purchased the Windwing Orion 2 shortly after its release in 2022, mostly out of curiosity. I've started to put some more serious hours on this throttle in the last two months in DCS. However, I use the F-16 handle instead of the F-18 handle, since that's the jet I've been learning on. Altitude. I'll start by framing the cost of these two throttles. For a US purchase, the Winwing is $344 US dollars shipped, and the Verpal is $420 shipped. Also note that for European purchases, it seems common that a VAT tax is required for the Winwing, since they have no European distributor, whereas the Verpal does not have a VAT tax on import. These throttles are basically in the same high-end price range you find most of Verpal, Premium, VKB, and Winwing products. That being above your more entry-level Thrustmaster sticks and below boutique replica and simulation pieces of kit such as RealSim. As far as overall quality to their price points, I think they both match their quality to the price you're paying for them, but let's get into the comparison here. We'll start with the throttle handles going over the button layout. Both are split throttle design, with the ability to separate the throttles. The Winwing split throttle handle can be a little bit finicky. As compared to the ease of the Verpal throttle. Along the front of the Winwing throttle, you have a three-way switch, two momentary buttons, a spring-loaded return-to-center axes, and an analog stick with a center press. Along the front of the Verpal throttle, we have an encoder wheel with press, a momentary button, a two-way hat with center press, a slider access with a center detent, a four-way hat with push, and also an analog stick with a push on it. Along the side of the wing wing throttle, you have two four-way hats with push, uh, a momentary button. You also have this momentary on, off, and on switch, which is typically used as the uh, speed brake in aircraft. Now on the verbal throttle, the two-way encoder wheel, we have three four-way hats with push, we have three momentary push buttons. There's one hidden right down here as well. That puts the total inputs and immediate control on your throttle hand at 33 buttons and three axes on the Verpal and 25 buttons and three axes on the wind wing. While the Verpal wins out on raw number of inputs, I will say that the throttle can feel a little bit crowded with how many inputs are tied to hats instead of buttons. For a lot of games I play, I struggle to even bind all of the Verpal handle. Some of the hats on the Verpal feel a bit mushy as well, especially on the side. Compare that to the wing wing, they have a much more definitive feeling uh, push for each direction. On top of that, the center press for the wing wing has a lot more travel. So I know if I'm going for like a center or back push, I'm not gonna accidentally push that one in. Whereas on the verpals, you can see they require almost no, they have almost no travel and not much force. So it'd be very easy to accidentally turn that on. While the verbal throttle also has more momentary buttons, three of them are in kind of an awkward place to reach, being here, under, and in this kind of pinky area. Whereas the wing wing has two that sit in a more natural uh, place under your fingers. For games where fast reactive inputs are required, I would actually prefer the momentary buttons placed closer to how the wing wing handle has it. Whereas the verbal sits a lot of hats in those places. Moving on to the base, you'll have to excuse some of my labels here. I have these on both throttles for how I have my binding set for a couple different games. Starting with Verpal this time, we have four two-way switches, 
six momentary press buttons, three momentary two-way switches, two encoder dials with push as well, a sliding axis, and a five-way dial. Verbal by default uses this mode dial to give you more virtual bindings. The detent mechanism I have here is also a 3D printed one with a center detent. But I won't review that since the CM3 comes with its own adjustable detents similar to the Wing Wing's finger lift kit you'll see in the next part. Moving on, the Wing Wing throttle has four two-way switches as well, four three-way switches, five momentary press buttons, and also a three-way dial with a center press, four encoder dials with a push, and two slider axes with a center detent on both. The Wii Wing also by default has a virtual button for each engine when it's in an idle and off um, position. This is used mostly in DCS so that you can send a signal when you've moved the throttle off or on, essentially. On the center detent, or sorry, the finger lift kits, I have the center detent installed, um, and it works pretty well. You can feel it as you move back and forth. You don't have to pull up, or let's show it here. You don't have to pull up on these finger lifts each time, um, but it can be helpful sometimes depending on how much force you have applied to the throttle, which another neat thing, is we have two screw holes right here where you can actually adjust the tension in the throttle on the fly, uh, which I really like. The Verpal has this functionality also, but you have to remove the back base in order to do it. One thing I will note about using the center detent at least is going back, it's a lot easier to kind of just roll over without stopping and it moving forward, it kind of gives you more of a stop there. So this puts the total physical inputs of the wing wing base to 41 buttons and two axes to Verpal's 31 and one axes. Here the wing wing wins on raw physical input, but this is due in part to its size and another being its use of three-way switches, which you may not be able to fully utilize in some games outside of DCS and other more hardcore sims. Overall, I think the base of the wing wing lends itself great to DCS but the Verpal throttle base is better suited as a generic throttle. This comes down to the design philosophy of the two companies though. Wing Wing is much more geared to selling one-to-one uh, -one replica flight controls for DCS players, whereas Verpal makes a wider array of generic flight peripherals. That's not to say the Wing Wing won't work for your space sims. I had the Orion 2 Hotas bound and working well on my second computer and flew around with it in Star Citizen a fair bit but more that the Verpal Throttle is a little bit better in that will work for anything category. All right, we've covered the facts. Now I can start to talk about my opinion on the two throttles. As I said earlier, the quality of both of these throttles are phenomenal. Both have very smooth and accurate movements in the throttle throw. Find it very easy to make precise movements without over uh, extending. And if there's ever, ever anything I want to adjust tension wise, both have the ability to do so. You can also probably see some wear on my Verpal. I've practically abused the thing with the duration and intensity of use I've put on it. It hasn't been without issue on this Verpal throttle though. Funnily enough, a common complaint thrown at the Orion when it came out was the exposed throttle wires you can see here. Many argued that this would put strain and eventually cause these cables to fail. What people didn't realize is Verpal throttles have the same exact weakness. It's just hidden from view inside of the base. Uh, and the wires are actually thinner and more exposed. At one point, the wires started to fail on my Verpal throttle, and when I brought it back below about 30% throw, all the buttons on the handle would stop working. Despite me buying this throttle secondhand, Verpal's customer support actually cooperated with me and sent me a new set of wires to replace them. So big props to Verpal for their excellent customer service. I often find this idea thrown around too that Wing Wing is lower quality. I don't think this is the case at all. Both throttles feel equal in quality to me, but I do think it's valid to point out that Winning's quality control is a little bit lower than Verpal's. I actually had my throttle arrive with an issue. Sometimes the mini stick right here would just kind of start to throw really wild inputs around. This was pretty disappointing, but I contacted Winning's customer support and it was a similar experience to dealing with say VKBs who I've had to contact a couple times for their sticks that I use. 
They had me diagnosed and attempt some minor repairs, and after a little back and forth, they mailed me a new mini stick to replace a defective one. Overall, a pretty normal customer support experience, which is something I've heard a lot of criticisms to WinWing on. So I don't think software should be a huge factor in comparisons here, so I'm going to go kind of quickly through this. WinWing SimApp software is pretty easy to use, and it's very user-friendly, whereas the Verbal software, it offers a little bit more functionality, but it's much harder to use. Personally, I like using Wooming software more, and most of the functionality in Verples can be done easier through Joystick Gremlin. You'll see here a lot of the common stuff you may want to do, 4x32 button mode. Uh, you can switch these sliders here to have but to be button to axes modes, um, or both. I usually set them to both here. Um, and then, yeah, verbal thing, you can do the same sort of thing. It just is a lot more work. However, there is the fact that you have the LEDs that you can kind of program and the state switching built within. On the note of LED programming, another cool thing about the verbal multicolor LEDs is that you can do some pretty neat things with them programming outside of uh, just the, the stock software. For example, here we have the Verpal link tool. You can see you have a bunch of rules for a bunch of different LEDs, and I'll show a little example of that as well. Um, but so you get those sort of options, whereas Windwings, about all you can do is sync your uh, backlights to DCS so that when you turn up or down your panel lights in DCS, the same will be done here. To uh, Wing Wing's credit, though, doing that is a literal push of the button. The link tool is not complicated to use. I find it easier than their default software, but it's still a little bit of work. Okay, but which one do I buy? Both of these throttles are great, and I really don't think you can make a definitive. This throttle is better than this one on these two. I'd say the biggest factors in picking are your budget. The Wing Wing is cheaper than the Verpal one. Well, if you're in the U.S., they're probably about equal. I don't know what the VAT costs are. Sorry for the ignorant Americanism there. But also, what you play. If you fly a lot of F-18 or F-16, I think the Wing Wing is an easy pick here. There are some other factors to think about as well. As you can probably see, the uh, Wing Wing throttle handle sits a bit higher, so if you're playing on a desk with no mounts, you may find that more uncomfortable. Really though, I would consider the features of each one, or hell, I would even just Pick which one you think is cooler and go from there outside the main two factors I mentioned previously. If I had to pick one to keep, I think I would keep the Wing Wing. This more has to do with the fact that I find the one-to-one -one recreation when playing DCS very cool, and it can still function very well as a generic throttle for other games I play. I hope this is a useful and thorough comparison of these two throttles. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Thanks for watching all the way through, and I'll probably start making some more videos about my flight sim setups and other reviews in the future.